So in 2009, let's kind of get on a time machine and kind of go back a couple of years now. Um, me and my best friend started a company. Now, this was peak post-recession India in the world. And everybody we spoke to said, why are you doing it? People were worried about their jobs and we were leaving ours. People are saying nobody wants to spend any money and we were expecting someone to give us their money. And considering the fact that we'd spent six months thinking of the name and literally two, two actual weeks on what you would actually do, the future didn't look really bright. But then the, the point or the question most people asked us is, isn't this a stupid idea? Uh, I go back to that, there are two things that have always been my side. Stupid ideas and paranoia. The two pillars of my existence. And although they might seem bizarre and wrong on so many levels, I truly believe they have made me the person I am today. But why stupid ideas and paranoia, you might say? Think of any invention, any discovery, any form of innovation in this world, it started off with a stupid idea. But also, at the back of that person's head, there was a little tiny voice, which was a paranoid voice, to say, do you know what you're doing? I know you're going to do something stupid, so maybe I'll help you along the way. So I thought I'll make this a very profound conversation where I would put up really interesting quotes and I would you know, enthrall you all in all these kind of things. But then the stupid voice in my head said, let's just do memes. So when you think of stupid ideas and paranoia, your mind pretty much works in this tangent. You have an idea. One side of your brain says, I'm not so sure. Do you think this is a good idea or a stupid idea? And the other idea is all rainbows and says, nothing can go wrong. I have thought of everything or rather overthought of everything. So let's kind of go back in time. We're getting back on that time machine and going way, way back. Think of me, eight years old, no hair, no beard. Uh, back then, this was my nemesis. This was the tiled roof of the house I grew up in. There was a, there was a terrace next to it, and I would play cricket over there every evening, or later afternoon also sometimes. And every time you'd hit a ball over it, you'd have to go find a new ball. Because nobody would tell me what was on the other side. I'd go to an adult and ask them this question and they would give me a standard adult response of, don't go there, it's dangerous. Now, when you tell an eight-year-old that A, you can't do something, and second, it's dangerous, his mind starts wanting. And his overt sense of imagination takes over. So in my mind, I was Count Dugirala, on his way to climb Mount Doom to rescue Princess Balls. And as, as I made that plan and decided to climb on top of this tiled roof, there's a tiny voice in my head which said, maybe you should take something along. And when you were kids, you used to play in the sa sandbox and you used to have that small rake you would carry along. So for some reason, I decided to carry that along. So I get on top of the tiled roof, and you should remember, that on bo both sides, it was a two-floor drop. So my parents were at work, my grandmother was asleep, and I have gotten out to rescue Princess Balls. And as I'm ten steps in, I decide maybe it'll be a good idea for me to go sideways and not straight up. So five steps while I'm going sideways, I slip and I start rolling down. As I'm rolling down, there was this other, that voice which made me carry the rake kind of got louder and said, pull that thing out right now. And then it got louder and it held on to something which was a crack on that tile. So I didn't fall down two floors. And I was a lot more careful and I got to the other side. And voila, Princess Balls was there, extremely dusty and dirty and in some points it deflated, but she was still there. And I also found a staircase which led to our backyard. So Thank you, adults, for telling me there was a back door. But then, I'm going to take the time machine again a little more forward. 
I'm going to take you to when I'm 13. We've all seen this, right? We've seen multiple movies where people miraculously jump off moving buses, trains, planes, spaceships, and land on their feet. And although science will tell us otherwise, you've got to believe the movies, right? What, what happens there actually happens, especially when you're 13 years old. So I decided, why don't we try this out? But this time, my friend Paranoia was alert from the beginning. So while, while my dear friend Stupid was saying, there's no such thing as a stupid idea, my friend Paranoia was prepared. And she said, I think it's time we prepare for this. What can really go wrong over here? A, you could land miraculously on your feet. B, you could maybe fall on your face and kind of spoil that part of it. Or fall on your elbows and knees, or, or D, which is pretty much all of it. So then, because of my friend paranoia, I decided this is time for reinforcements. So I have quickly gone from just thinking what can go wrong to visualizing what can go wrong. So I wrap some bandanas on my elbows. I have, I'm wearing shorts inside my school pants. And for some reason, I'm wearing a surgical mask on my face. And so I creep up to the bus as it's about to leave and I hold on to the ladder. I hold on to the ladder and it starts moving and I'm waiting for that peak momentum. I'm fighting science, but science is with me. I'm waiting for that peak velocity to come in and I jump off and I land on my feet and nothing happens. I look left, I look right. I'm like, yeah! No, actually, I fell down my face and I rolled around a lot and there was a heap of dust and then as the dust went up, I was lying flat on my back on a, a, band, on a very lonely tar road with a big smile on my face because I had done something really stupid. Luckily, my precautions had come in play and nothing, no damage on the face. Elbows and knees were a little scraped, but the extra padding helped. Now, why have I told you these two stories? Because in life, especially when you start something on your own, especially when you're a leader or a manager or anything else, you have to make choices. There'll be good choices, bad choices, stupid choices, horrendous choices, but they're your choices. And there's nobody above you who's going to save you. So you've got to figure out how you can make those stupid choices and still figure a way to get out of them. So your friend, stupid, and your friend, paranoia, are going to play that game of table tennis to always get you out of it. And in that whole battle, you might sometimes seem like an extremely paranoid person who's overthinking things, but you're just being prepared. You just know all the facts. Or in some cases, you're also telling people that life is never linear. You don't start off and then study and get a job and start something and go on ahead. What you do in life looks a little like this. Where you start off wanting to be a computer engineer, end up being a mechanical engineer, for some reason decides to work for a whiskey company for two to three months, then join a call center in their cancellations department, decide to leave all of that and apply for a job in ad sales, go to study PR, switch within a month to filmmaking, do, join your first job, quit in a week, and eventually end up starting a company. I still don't know how I've survived, but I'm guessing there are more of me out there. So when you reach this point of maturity, as this photograph shows, your level of stupid and paranoia have also grown up together. Your levels of stupidity as it grows up, which means your ideas are bigger, bolder, terrible in some cases, but the level of paranoia is thinking all the time. It's kind of thinking, okay, wait, stupid is going to do these things. You can't stop stupid. Maybe I'll just find a way to cover up for him. And that brings me to a term which a lot of people kind of have used. Is that if you're too paranoid, aren't you a pessimist? And I turn around and I say, I'm not a pessimist. I'm a defensive optimist. Now, there's actually a term I, heard, I read in a book called The Originals by Adam Grant where he talks about people called defensive optimists and they are people who feel deep sense of anxiety and stress when they're doing something and they're taking a risk. But somewhere inside, instead of 
pushing it down, they let it get larger, and they flip it around, and they make that their motivation. So yes, that's my secret. I'm always paranoid. And so how do we end this whole thing off? Why have I been telling you these really contrived stories and, and jumping around and trying to make you laugh by just showing you memes? It's a simple fact that your kind of stupid is your own special kind of stupid, so you always keep doing that. But make paranoia your friend, give it a hug, and say, just take care of him, will you? So be Batman. Be like Batman and just believe that although everybody else has superpowers, you can jump in there with absolutely nothing but a utility belt, and you can be Batman in the world of princesses. Thank you. <laughs>